It's a, uh, you know, this is probably where the election will be determined, not necessarily around this table, but certainly in this province. Uh, Marlene Catterall, what are you hearing at the door? We've been hearing a lot about how Liberals are taking it on the chin over the Ontario budget, uh, over sponsorship. What are you hearing as you go door to door? Well, what I'm hearing going door to door is that people are taking their vote very seriously. They're considering it very seriously. Um, and I think possibly that's a reflection of three new leaders of the national parties. Uh, that's causing people to look at, you know, what do I know about these people? But are, you, hear, I, are you hearing anger trust? about the budget in Ontario? Um, certainly hearing some of that, uh, but it also people saying, yeah, but that's not Paul Martin's problem, that's Dalton McGuinty's. Okay, Mr. Poiliev, what are you hearing? I'm hearing that the election is really about accountability. People look at the Liberal record and have seen the broken promises um, on a, both a provincial and a national level. The, the uh, provincial Liberal budget was only a reinforcement of what we've seen nationally because indeed this election itself represents a broken promise in that we were supposed to have answers into the sponsorship scandal before going to the polls but uh, have yet to hear anything. Uh, so uh, people are cynical and they're looking for accountability and I believe that will be the number one issue at the ballot box. Mr. Brown? I'm hearing that the, uh, the Liberal Party is schisming. I think that I can't speak for the side of the Liberal Party that is perhaps going to the Conservatives, but what I'm hearing with a great deal of pleasant surprise is the amount of liberal, former Liberal vote that is moving over to the New Democratic Party. And I think that is because the Liberals themselves have positioned themselves so far to the right relative to the mainstream centre in Canada that there is really no room for people who have that centrist view of Canada other than to move to the New Democrats. And the one thing our poll numbers do show is that there, the, the number of Canadians who answer that they want change continues to rise and that was a determining factor in the Ontario election and the change of government in Ontario. Um, with the numbers close, closing in Marlene Catterall on six, on t six and ten of Canadians who want change, um, what does that tell you? And if the change is away from the Liberal Party, how do you overcome that between now and June 28th? Well, I, the, you know, I can only disagree with a couple of my candidates and particularly the candidate for the NDP. Uh, today's platform released by Paul Martin was very clearly, while it's fiscally responsible, very clearly uh, look, uh, focused on the social concerns of, Canada, of Canadians, very clearly focused on a role for Canada in the world that is quite different than the Conservative Party would have us play. Shoulder to shoulder with George Bush is not the Canadian way. We're out there to help uh, restore security, to help build democratic governments around the world. But uh, in terms of heading right, uh, I'm not sure how my colleague from the NDP can uh, say that if he's had a look at all at the platform today. We're talking about a national day care program, the biggest investment in health that's, that's ever been made, and not only more money into health, but the kinds of services that people need, home care, pharma care. Okay. Let's talk about the daycare. I mean, a national daycare program was promised in the Red Book in 1993. Uh, you know that. You were there. The, it's, you were part of the government. Uh, here we are a decade later, and there's still no national daycare program, and the promise is back. Yeah, and uh, I remember, too, with Lloyd Axe, where they putting $700 million on the table for a national daycare program, and the provinces weren't ready to pick up on it. But since then, we've negotiated kind of a framework that allows us to go ahead with this, so the money we're putting in it uh, is not conditional on any provincial money. Obviously, if the province has put in more money, then it's very clearly going to be mean that we can do uh, much more with the money that's available. But it's not conditional on the provinces. Uh, it is very much childhood development focused and universal accessibility focused. Okay, let, let's get reaction to the, the Liberal platform promises unveiled today, Mr. Poilier. I expect it to hurt the Liberals terribly, especially in Ontario, where voters are cynical of these kinds of splashy, expensive promises that they've become accustomed to through the Liberal, uh, throughout the Liberal reign. Uh, As you, your, your party's making a lot of expensive promises too. Well, Much more expensive. Our, our, our promises are, are, are costed out. And, the only, the only difference fact, is you're getting fact, to make them for the first time. Well, we, 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 we've, we've uh, both the parties that now compose the new Conservative Party have advanced these kinds of ideas for nearly a decade and have a record of doing so in the, on the floor of the House of Commons. But it's, it's interesting that you do in fact point out that a lot of the splashy 
expense of liberal promises were made in 93, were made again in 97, were made in 2000, and as finance minister, Paul Martin did absolutely nothing to implement them. Now he wants us to believe that he is going to reinvest in health care after he amputated $25 billion from the system during his reign as finance minister. So the, the, the broken promises um, and the fact that they are now being re-announced in this election, I expect will uh, further exacerbate voter cynicism, especially in battleground Ontario, and uh, drive more votes away from the Liberals. It would, seems to, it would seem to me, Mr. Brown, that there's a, this is a, a move by the Liberal Party to try and, uh, it's a, essentially a left turn with this announcement today to try and draw supporters away, uh, perhaps mm -hmm red Tories from the Conservative Party or or, so I think that's or, or New Democrats who, who, who or Liberals who may be thinking of shifting to the New Democrats. How do you view this announcement today? I think you're absolutely correct and I think that what the announcement today is really reflecting is that the Liberals are recognizing that a large part of their support is drifting uh, over to the NDP. Uh, when I look at the uh, when I look at the new uh, the platform from the Liberal Party it struck me that uh, that it was they took the NDP platform they photocopied it they changed a few numbers around here and there and then they released it back out into the public as if it were their platform coming out from from square one they then uh they, 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 but we know from past experience that what the liberals then do is they they campaign from the left and as soon as they get reelected with that with those promises intact that platform the first place it goes is the shredder and we know that from every election to date where the where the liberals have been a uh, governing from the right and I think the voters have seen that and are recognizing that and are not going to put up with it again. In fact, I'd like to just agree with something Mr. Brown has said. I think the choice is now becoming increasingly clear. You have two parties now far on the left and one party, the Conservatives, now representing the centre uh, and the more conservative side of the spectrum. So in this platform, because it does shift so hard to the left with its massive spending promises, has left a whole lot of territory for the Conservatives to to, to absorb okay, how, in this coming I, I, election. How, how much territory? Stephen Harper's been uh, trying very hard to portray himself as a moderate and trying to appeal to that segment of the population, and yet he's dogged again today by questions about abortion and, and and saying today he would you know if there's a if a, a, a private members bill comes forward on abortion that that would be put to a free vote in the house but that his government a Stephen Harper government wouldn't right. bring forward legislation on abortion uh, if you were elected to the house of commons would you bring forward a private members bill on abortion oh, i have no plans of doing that and for, and, for, and furthermore uh, any party regardless of who forms government if there were, were a private member's bill of that kind, there would be a vote in the House of Commons. So it doesn't really matter if it's a conservative government or a liberal or a new democratic government. The, the reality is that people have the right to put forward private member's bills. Uh, the whole boogeyman strategy that the liberals have tried to employ against Stephen Harper isn't working, and the poll numbers show that. Okay, Both let, Tories let me... and formal alliance members are, are moving in behind this broad coalition. And that's what the numbers show. Okay. Mathematically, it's, it's undeniable. The same sex marriage issue is also uh, trailing Mr. Harper on the campaign trail today. I want to sure. show you what happened today in Guelph, Ontario, where there was a violent confrontation between uh, supporters of the Conservative Party and uh, two individuals uh, who are pro-same-sex marriage who showed up at this rally. So we'll watch this and then we'll, we'll talk about it. This is Guelph, Ontario today. They were roughed up, the two gentlemen, uh, a little bit. The police were called in, as you can see here, and the, the two men were escorted away from the rally. So uh, this is the kind of scene that I, I I know that Mr. Harper would would want to avoid, Mr. Poiliev, and yet there it is. How big of an issue is this going to continue to be? And what, what and I want from all three of you, uh, what's the potential of this kind of image damaging the message from the Conservative Party of, of moderation and that there's no hidden agenda and nothing to worry about. Well, on, on the matter of same-sex marriage, the way in which Mr. Harper voted in the House of Commons on the question uh, is widely supported as evidenced by numerous public opinion polls. It is very much a moderate position in and of itself. Uh, these kinds of uh, tactics that we saw at this previous rally 
I mean, we saw them earlier in the week with liberal cabinet ministers showing up, shoving the leader of the opposition, trying to push papers in his face, desperation tactics probably orchestrated behind the scenes by the Liberal Party, uh, as it's now being revealed were centrally planned by Mr. Martin's campaign with uh, Mr. McCallum and Ms. Uh, Scro uh, earlier on this week. So these are Liberal tactics that they tried to do through cabinet ministers and now are trying to do through people on the ground, and uh, they merely demonstrate the desperation of a campaign that's spiraling down. Marlene Catterall, we have how, how, how significant are, are these kinds of images going to be to the chances of your success in trying to paint Stephen Harper, your party's success, painting Mr. Harper as someone who is in fact not a We have two people turning up at a political event to try and defend their human rights and they get roughed up and to shut up. And that's exactly what we're concerned about. Stephen Harper refuses to come out and say whether he thinks a woman should have a right to a safe, legal abortion or not. He refuses to fire his health critic who questions that, who wants mandatory, obligatory, state-imposed counseling for Which a Paul woman on a, decision, on a decision Mr. that Martin should did, be Mr. Martin did decision. say something similar to that. <clears throat> yes, Mr. Martin did, did say that. that. Are, you, and, are you criticizing your leader? We, we, are you Stephen criticizing Harper, Stephen, uh, let, Stephen let Harper refuses Stephen Harper refuses to rule out using the notwithstanding clause to override people's basic human rights. I mean, now it's gays and lesbians. Who next? Well, it's okay, Mr. Brown, and then Mr. Polyev can answer. I agree fully with what Marlene is saying. Uh, the uh, conservative campaign, we keep seeing incidents occurring which are embarrassing Stephen Harper, and they're embarrassing Stephen Harper because they're portraying the side of the conservative party that he doesn't want to be visual, uh, visual or seen by the electorate in this election. It's not that it's not there. It is there, and this is the problem. Once the election is over, we'll see it in spades. And I think that Canadians have every right to be very fearful of the hidden agendas that that, that that party is bringing if they were to form a government. This is back to the boogeyman strategy. It shows that we are, in fact, gaining momentum. And I find it interesting that a new schism has just opened up right at this table between Ms. Catterall and her uh, her leader. Uh, her leader said earlier this week he supports uh, some sort of mandatory counseling for women who are seeking to have abor abortions. She has now just called that idea extreme. So I, I find it very interesting that now she is contradicting her own leader in uh, in attacking that position. Forgive uh, me, but I think it, Mr. Uh, it's, uh, I'll, I'll just finish my point, if I very might. Very quickly. Uh, and uh, so, yes, our campaign is moving upwards. There are there is increasing desperation on the liberal side, and you will see these kinds of uh, of outbursts throughout the campaign as an attempt to derail what is a, uh, our winning campaign. And Ms. Carroll, I think um, Mr. Harper's candidate is totally re misrepresenting Paul Martin's uh, p position on the, on this issue. But the the issue here is, what does Stephen Harper stand for? Uh, what do, does, does he stand for a woman's right to choose to have a safe, healthy abortion or not? Uh, and the issue of bilingualism, well, first of all, his, his critic, the person he chose, repudiates what's supposedly the policy of the party. Stephen Harper says, well, has re opposed it in the past. Now he says it's party policy. Then he says, yeah, but maybe it's open for discussion. What can you believe? This is a final word to, to, to you. Um, Jack Layton continued today to, to hammer uh, the issue of privatization, no privatization for health care, saying that uh, he would cut off uh, mm -hmm. public funding for any private for profit clinics or hospitals. Um, you know, is, is, is this going to be? Uh, the ticket to success for Jack Layton? Is it going to be health care, health care, health care? I think it's a large part of it. Canadians are justifiably very concerned about their health care, and we are seeing the potential for an erosion of our health care system into increasingly a user pay type of situation. We see what the Liberals did with health care in the province of Ontario, for example, as, uh, as a little bit of a warning shot that we should take very closely. I'm particularly concerned with the way in which uh, we're, we're now saving money on health care at the province of Ontario by defunding some pretty important services that are important important towards maintaining and minimizing the cost of long-term care. These are, for example, chiropractic as well as uh, physiotherapy services. Mm -hmm. We have to be very careful we don't fall into the trap of looking out for trying to save a few bucks today and creating long-term extra costs down the line for the system. All right. To all three of you, thanks for coming in to speak with us. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Good you. luck to all of you on the campaign trail. All right. Thank you. Thank you.